This is Grave Confessions from the Grave Talks. Daily, raw, real, and disturbing accounts of the living, interacting with the dead. To share your grave confession, experience with the paranormal, supernatural, or the undead, call toll-free 888-GHOST-13. That's 888-446-7813. Now, today's grave confession. Um, this is Robert from Utah calling. It's Actually, it's been quite a while since I called. I told you guys before about my experiences working at a Army Depot in uh, Oregon. Um, and I am an EPP. Great move. I look forward to the, the email with the episode every Friday. Um, anyhow, okay, so this is, I'm going to tell you, I left that place. In 2009, we moved out here to Utah, and we rented a house, kind of sight unseen. It was we didn't see it in person. We rented it over the internet through a local website, and um, so we moved in. And of course, you know, being the new guy at the base out here, um, I was put on night shift, and uh, so and and of course, and we got kids. So for for the kids to live their lives, you know, be kids and whatever. When I'd go to sleep after work, I'd wear earplugs and like a sleeping mask and, you know, have the room as dark as I could. And um, and I don't know how long this had been going on, but sometime or the other, I, I started noticing that maybe not every day, but often somebody would come in and sit on, on the end of the bed on my wife's side. You know, I could feel that. And so in... And this had gone on for a while, and then I asked her one day if it was her, and she told me no, maybe with like one or two exceptions, where she sat at the head of the bed, it was not her. And um, sometime in November, something had taken place with like one of her adult kids and stuff, and uh, she ended up going back to Oregon for a while, and of course taking our girls with, and so and we, we kind of knew it's going to take a while. But, um, and so because we pulled them out of school and didn't want to do that again, we had decided that, that they were going to stay just until the end of the school year, at least, you know, come what may. And so then I'm there in the house by myself. Okay. And this was a, it was a single story house with a full basement downstairs, which we actually underused because we just stored stuff in there. It was, it was a daylight basement. It was pretty awesome. It was huge. But anyhow, so I, I noticed I would come home in the morning and I'd hear pounding and stuff like doors. And there were only two doors down there, but I would hear doors open and shut or, you know, slamming. One door was like to a room that the people whom we rented from had been making down there. The other end was just wide open. And the other one was the room to where like the the water heater and the, the HVAC unit, stuff like that were. But so in the course, I go down there and check, and there's nothing. And uh, one time, one time I even forgot and left. I turned on the light for I don't know what reason because it was pretty light down there. But And I turned on the light and forgot to turn it off. And then when I got up in the evening, the doors were slamming again or whatever, and I went down there and, and noticed I left on the light. So, but, but anyhow, though, had that going on. And then as soon as I'd lay down, I'd notice that there'd be footsteps up and down because from the living room there, and the basement was just kind of like right there. Um, you had a little railing and no door, no, no anything. And just there was the basement, the, the stairs that led down. But, uh, and then there was like a little hallway and that's where the rooms were. But, um, so and at this time, I wasn't wearing the earplugs anymore and stuff. And, of course, you know, keeping the door open because the kids were not there. There was nobody there but me. So, um, but I, I noticed, though, as soon as I would lay down, that there'd be footsteps up and down in, inside of that hallway and just kind of pacing back and forth and pacing back and forth. And, um, and sometimes it, it sounded like, I mean, there was actually somebody in the house, you know, uh, and but uh, but the footsteps would go up and and sometimes it was just bad enough to where like oh it wouldn't let me sleep because you know and I'd hear there were times too that I heard 
it sounded like somebody coming. They were in the house. They were coming in that room or whatever. And, you know, and, and, and I would sleep with a firearm under the pillow just in case. And there were a few times that I'd sit up and stuff with my hand on that weapon just in case it was a real person. And it wasn't. But, uh, so, and, and I felt ridiculous one evening because there were times it was bad, but that was it with the, the noises, so the walking up and down the hall and whatever. But, and kind of felt ridiculous for what evening. It, it must have been a bad day because I got up pretty early in the evening and it was still daylight. And, you know, and I sort of addressed this thing and I just told it, look, okay, you know, when, when I come home, you got to let me sleep. You know, it's like, I'm not sleeping in the daytime because I'm being lazy or whatever. Cause it's like, and I, and I said, you know, I know you got to be here at night as well. And so you see me put on the uniform and get ready to go to work, you know, which really that, that didn't help. <laughs> didn't stop it or anything, but, and, uh, and I was touched a couple of times. It was one day cause after my wife was gone and stuff, I, I started sleeping on her side of the bed, you know, because I missed her. But uh, so I'm sleeping there, and I felt felt a hand on my leg. And what's funny, it wasn't like cold and and whatever that that people say. It it felt electric almost. It was tingly, and, and that was just kind of weird. And of course, made me jump. And then uh, there was another time, you know, I'm sleeping on her side of the bed. My uh, my side was the other side there. And, you know, when you, you're laying down and you bump your partner and kind of um, move away because you don't want to disturb them. Well, I'm laying down and I felt that there was somebody in the bed. They bumped me. <laughs> and so when I kind of jumped and it, oh, my God, I was tired. It must have been my that, that night must have been my Monday, because usually on my Mondays, by the time I go to bed, I've been up like 24 hours. So I didn't even look over. I just said. Look, I'm tired. I got to sleep. Stay on your side of the bed and leave me the hell alone. And uh, so, and, and I even told my wife, and she didn't take it serious because she, nobody else had experienced anything, but I did tell her about, you know, what, with the footsteps going up and down the hall and whatever. And um, one of, not the, but one of the final incidents. Okay, and so, and I play guitar. I'm I'm left-handed. I won't tell you I'm good at it, but I did find that. And for for years, I've just like Jimi Hendrix did, taken that basic Fender body style and turned it over and played because a left-handed guitar is expensive. But I found a site that had cheap ones, so I I, I bought one, and I had it, and it was sitting in the living room. And one day I got up, kind of must have got up awful, awful early, because usually when I'd get up, I'd have to have coffee and, you know, get myself together and whatever before, really, I did anything. And uh, But this was still daylight. So I get up, and I'm going to play my guitar a little bit, you know, to just kind of screw around. And, uh, and as I'm, as I'm um, down there plugging the cord in to the amplifier, I hear footsteps run up that hallway i saw like a flash of something reflected in the microwave and then i heard the door that leads from the kitchen to the garage um open and slam shut now actually whether it actually actually did or not i don't know but i heard that and and all i could tell it was fine be that way then you know i didn't think that was that bad but and then uh Short time after that, probably three months or so, the, the people who owned the house, because they had moved to Colorado for something, but they had come and they, they told us, because um, they still had stuff down in the basement, but they came and told us that, that for whatever reason, they were just going to let the bank take it back. So they were giving us time enough so that we could move and find somewhere else. And so, and I talked to them about different things. Bad thing is, I never talked to them about that. Or if they had anything going on, but okay. So, um, I guess that's all with that for now. Thanks for the show, guys, and keep up the good work. This has been a grave confession from the grave talks.
to share your grave confession experience with the paranormal or the undead. Call toll-free 888-GHOST-13. That's 888-446-7813. 